What's up, everybody? It's your favorite. It's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Figma Between the Worlds link. I never played the game. I know it's like a younger link. This is on loan to me from Esteban. Good dude has uh, been a big support of what I do, and it is appreciated. And I'm trying to get these toys back to him, so I'm working my way through these. This is a simple Sunday review, so no skit, and it's a little bit of an older figure. So this one seems to be the deluxe edition. So he's a ton of accessories. Let's go ahead and get started. And he comes with the Figma hand tree, which you know I love. Two posing hands or relaxed hands, two holding hands, which we'll talk about soon, two fist hands, and then you saw the two weapon holding hands in the opening footage. Of course, what's a link without a sword? And he comes with a nice one. We have a metallic blue and then a metallic silver around the blade, and then we have a metallic purple and then the little gold diamond there. And then the hilt, obviously, this goes into both sides of the hand, and the hilt has the metallic blue and purple as well. He comes with his shield, which has two things to lock in to hold it in place around the hand that peg in, and then silver trim. We have the purple, purplish blue paint, and then the red, gold, and silver. It looks very sharp, very clean. And he has no problem holding those. The, the handle that Esteban has is broken, so be careful. There's a small plastic tip where the two parts of the handle that he grips pegs together, and obviously he's done some damage to it, so theoretically it could happen to you as well. He comes with this hook shot. The he has the one that's like stowed, has the metallic, it's like a silver purplish almost. Looks very nice. And then the burgundy and the gray and then the blue. And then the extended version, which is just the, you know, with the hook out. I am having a hard time getting it to go into his hand, and I don't want to put too much stress on this because it is a thinner piece of plastic, so I'm going to let it go. I would imagine with some hot water or something, you could make this work, but I'm, I'm not having an easy time of it at the moment. And then he comes with a couple display pieces, like a little pot to break apart. Uh, this little fella, which is like a little snail in a snail shell, and then a, a rupee with a green translucent plastic, looks nice. All of it, you know, all of it is cool little stuff to kind of just have sitting about. He comes with a bomb, nice enough sculpt. We got the black, gray, beige uh, wick or fuse there that's all sculpted, and then the top of it is painted red as if it is lit. And then it has a uh, peg uh, hole at the bottom, which you can use for the hand, which you can have him posed with as well. And as you can see, he comes with a Figma display stand. And then he comes with this, which is like a little spinny weapon. Like, I don't know what it is. It was probably in the game. I don't know if it made him fly or it was like a nunchuck or what it was. But it has a handle that's all green and sculpted. And then it plugs into this, which is a translucent piece, which is nice. Um, like it doesn't, it's, it looks like, mm, I can't tell. It looks like they may have printed it on both sides, which always gives it a better look. And in, by sliding the peg up through his hand, you can have him kind of flying away or landing up to you. And then he has this, which is some sort of link hieroglyph. I don't understand. I don't know what this is all about, but it's a thing. I'm sure it's accurate. It's painted well on translucent plastic. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with this, but I'm sure it's fine. And now we can get to the figure. So the head is your standard kind of ball hinge with a peg that goes into the back of the head and then a peg that goes into the neck, which gets you good articulation down to there, up to there, swivel back and forth, works fine. The, the face, I like this stern face, good sculpt, painted well, pupils, iris, all that kind of stuff, all done well, eyebrows painted on, looks great. Hair is good. There is a seam here uh, that may bother you. It doesn't necessarily bother me on this particular figure. And then you have the cap, which you can change the kind of direction of the, the, the back of the cap, which I like. It just helps for posing and stuff. It's just a little, it's just that little certain extra something sometimes. I dig that. Then we have the tunic, which is done well. Sculpt-wise, it's on a single ball peg, it feels like. So you don't get much out of it. Like standard, usually they have like a ball hinge inside with peg, peg, or it's connected to a three-way down here, so to speak, and then it's pegged into the chest. But this feels like a ball peg. I could be wrong. Um, the belt is sculpted nicely and painted clean with the brown and gold. This is a softer plastic, but not quite soft enough, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. The shoulders... Ball hinge to a ball peg inside the torso. You actually get a decent range out of them all the way up to there. And then not much across the body, but a good bit back. 
single ball hinged elbow, which is nice. And then a wrist swivel and hinge. It hinges, it swivels at both ends so you can get the up down or the in out depending on how you have it positioned. Bracelet, gold paint with the little uh, metallic purple eye done well. Same for the other side minus the bracelet. Now for these, we have T-jointed ball joints. I'm guessing it's not, I'm guessing it's a three-way into this ball peg up there, but I'm not sure. Um, the, the soft plastic is soft, but it's not quite soft enough to get this leg all the way up as far as you would need for some of the jumping poses that you could pull off with the stand. So that's kind of a bummer. Legs out to the side work well. You do get a thigh swivel around the ball peg that's really nice. Single hinge, ball hinge, knee that gets you, uh, I'd say, a slightly past 90 degrees. Boots are all sculpted nice with the wrinkles and such. And then we have a ball hinged ankle that gets you a tilt down. Actually, it's a ball hinged ankle that's pegged into here and here. So you get more of a tilt than you normally would because you can position it back towards the back of the boot, which is nice. And then an ankle tilt down, which also works well. And then a toe uh, hinge, which isn't the worst I've ever seen. And a decent rocker. And then here is the figure from the back. So all in all, it's a cool little figure. It's not my favorite representation of Link, but if you were like a hardcore Zelda fan and you know you like this game specifically or this you know iteration specifically, I think that you would be more than satisfied, honestly. And there he is with the Link that I have, which I know isn't the latest and greatest Link, but he's good enough for my purposes and hopefully will give you an idea of size. Final thoughts wise, my only real issues are, you know, of course, you know, the, the fragility of those those handles is obviously an issue. It's hard to really get it to work with that broken piece. I wish that the abdominal articulation worked a bit better. It is fairly limited. You pretty much just get the swivel out of it. And I wish that the softer plastic in the front of the tunic was a bit softer or a bit more malleable because I do have a hard time getting the legs in a decent pose in terms of bending forward. But that's about it. The accessories are great. The sculpt is great. The paint is great. I think if you're a hardcore Link fan or a fan of this particular series or iteration of Link that you'll be 100% satisfied probably. So in that regard, I recommend it. But if you were a guy just looking for one Link to put on your shelf, this is probably not the one for you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.